What's on your radar, Brianna? <laughs> well, Robbie, as it turns out, the healthcare situation in this country is so bad that even Donald Trump realizes that it benefits his presidential chances to come out in defense of, at very least, health care for the elderly. In a campaign ad he issued last week, he warned, quote, under no circumstances should Republicans vote to cut a single penny from Medicare or Social Security. Let's take a listen. Well, we absolutely need to stop Biden's out-of-control spending. The pain should be borne by Washington bureaucrats not by hardworking American families and American seniors. The seniors are being absolutely destroyed in the last two years. Cut the hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars going to corrupt foreign countries. Cut the mass releases of illegal aliens that are depleting our social safety net and destroying our country. Cut the left-wing gender programs from our military. Cut the billions being spent on climate extremism. Cut waste, fraud, and abuse everywhere that we can find it, and there's plenty of it. But do not cut the benefits our seniors worked for and paid for their entire lives. Now, you might remember that Donald Trump distinguished himself from the Republican field back in 2016, in part by positioning himself as a defender of Medicare and Social Security against Republicans who sought to cut those programs. Remember when he used to say that he didn't want people dying in the streets from a lack of health care? Well, in fact, Trump's budgets repeatedly proposed huge cuts to Medicare and other life-sustaining social safety net programs. But I will give him credit for at least understanding what DeSantis apparently does not. Americans not only need Medicare to keep from, quote, dying in the street in their old age, they actually love the program. 95% of beneficiaries say they're satisfied with their Medicare Advantage plan, and 93% polled recently by Morning Consult said that protecting funding should be a priority for the Biden administration. 68% said it should be a top priority. This seems like a no-brainer. If you want to win an election, and more importantly, if you want to protect elderly seniors who have worked hard their entire lives in anticipation of receiving this benefit, you need to be focused on health care and not just for the elderly. An October 2022 poll showed that 39% of voters are either very likely or somewhat likely to cross party lines for lower health care costs. But get this, while Trump is wisely making a bid for health care concerned voters, Biden seems to be thumbing his nose at them, or at least hoping they don't notice that his new chief of staff is deeply implicated in exactly the type of health care fraud that has caused the cost of health care to balloon and millions of Americans to pay more for their care with worse outcomes than anyone else in the developed world. I'm talking about Jeffrey Zients. The previously, uh, previously tasked with overseeing Biden's COVID response plan, the COVID czar will now be taking over Ron Klain's duties as right-hand man to POTUS. And if it wasn't already clear that Joe Biden's allegiance to the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry is stronger than his commitment to the people he was elected to protect, this choice of consigliere speaks volumes. Science has the largest net worth of any Biden administration official, personal wealth, that grew between $10.4 and $28 million in 2020 alone. So how did he gain so much while the rest of the country was in the throes of an economic crisis? Well, via healthcare profiteering. Last year, the American Prospect reported that, quote, over the span of two decades, the healthcare companies Zions controlled, invested in, and helped oversee were forced to pay tens of millions of dollars to settle allegations of Medicare and Medicaid fraud. They have also been accused of surprise billing practices and even medical malpractice. Taken together, an examination of the companies that made Zions rich paints a picture of a man who seized on medical providers as a way to capitalize on the suffering of sick Americans. His investment firm was fined $7 million over allegations of fraudulent Medicare and Medicaid billing in 2007. And one of his investment companies, Medesis, the second largest hospice service provider in the country, settled a similar Medicare and Medicaid fraud suit for $150 million a year earlier. Now, I want to be really clear about what his investment companies were doing. According to the DOJ, and Medesis billed Medicare for nursing and therapy services that were medically unnecessary or provided to patients who were not homebound and otherwise misrepresented patients' conditions to increase its Medicare payments. 
And when a whistleblower in the $150 million case tried to report fraud to upper management, she was told to hold off to see whether the government caught the errors. <laughs> in other words, let's see if we can get away with it. The whistleblower later, later had her pay cut and was demoted before they fired her. There's a special place in hell for people who would use the sick and elderly to extract money from the government. Apparently, they also have a special place in the Biden administration. Now, this will come as no surprise to anyone paying attention to, say, policy rather than fear-mongering articles about Bernie bros and snake emojis during the 2020 primary cycle. Joe Biden took more money from the health insurance and pharmaceutical industry than anyone else in the race. And we're all too savvy here on this show to think that they gave him that money for free. Biden immediately scrapped his weak commitments to build on Obamacare with a public option. Instead, he's pursued such progressive health care reforms as continuing Trump's Medicare privatization scheme. As Bronco Marchetich reported last year, the Biden administration has continued to pursue the Direct Contracting Entity Program, also known as ACO REACH, which opens the door to complete privatization of Medicare. The Arizona AMA chapter, American Medical Association, warned that seniors could find themselves subject to an exploitative system that, quote, limits care to provide maximum profit. In other words, they could get caught up in one of the schemes that made Jeff Zients so rich and Americans so sick. Now, Bernie has been reluctant to challenge Biden on his corruption, including with respect to the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry. But he did write an op-ed in Fox News this week, making a more generalized case against corporate greed in the pharmaceutical industry, which has caused U.S. drug prices to be at times 10 times higher than in neighboring or peer countries. Over the past 25 years, Bernie writes, the pharmaceutical industry has spent $8.5 billion on lobbying and over $745 million on campaign contributions to buy politicians. There are now three drug company lobbyists for every member of Congress. Pfizer has donated a million dollars to the Kentucky Republican Party to expand its headquarters there, which are, get this, named after Mitch McConnell. This after Pfizer increased its profits by 140% in 2021 to $22 billion. Let me ask you, did your health care costs go up or down during that same period of excessive profit? Now, Bernie pointed out that the very companies that profited from COVID while enjoying liability shields for harms caused are now looking to hike prices on the COVID vaccine by 400 percent. This is after Moderna received $1.7 billion from U.S. taxpayers to research and develop the vaccine in the first place, and after it made $19 billion in profits over the last two years. And it's not just COVID drugs. Bernie points out that Japanese drug manufacturer Estella raised the price of a prostate cancer drug by more than 75% to nearly $190,000 for the drug. This is a drug that federally funded scientists at UCLA invented in the first place and which sells for one sixth of the price in Canada. Over a million Americans rationed insulin last year because they couldn't afford their prescriptions. Meanwhile, drug manufacturer Eli Lilly increased the price by 1,200% since 1996. It costs $8 to produce insulin, but it sells for $275. In Canada, it costs a tenth of what it costs here. Meanwhile, Eli Lilly made $5.6 billion in profits in 2021, and its CEO made $50 million in one year alone. Now, Bernie ends his op-ed by calling on Congress to have the courage to take on the pharmaceutical industry, but he knows they don't because it's not about courage. It's about corruption. And Joe Biden, whom Bernie describes as his good friend, is hardly immune from that corruption. He just appointed a pharmaceutical fraudster to be his right-hand man. And one of the most flagrant shows of fidelity to big pharma you can imagine. And one of the worst parts, the mainstream media will treat this betrayal as less important than some classified documents in Mike Pence's office. And there's not much we can do about it at this point. This is, this, is, this is what our priorities are as a country. It doesn't seem like either political party, with the exception of some of these op-eds from, from Bernie Sanders and Independent, are really willing to call out this deep corruption in the pharmaceutical industry. I thought it was very interesting to see Bernie Sanders pen an op-ed for Fox News. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he was very savvy, your old boss, to, <laughs> uh, to frame it 
in a kind of language that appeals to conservatives at this specific moment in time, because there is a lot of animus in the conservative movement or conservative media toward pharmaceutical companies right now, particularly Pfizer, due to vaccines and vaccine, uh, the idea that vaccines were going to be required of people, that they've you know, failed to fully deliver on the process of what Pfizer said, and, and and also, to conservatives' credit, touching on some of the corruption there, the partnership between the private sector and the public sector that, as you correctly point out, was tremendously profitable for Pfizer. You know, what did they do? Uh, who have they bought off uh, to, to ensure they don't have any real competition for these kinds of things, including for those products? Uh, you, you know, you listed off a bunch of really expensive products that I, I have to guess, I know it's true for insulin, I bet it's true for a lot of the others that don't have, com so ideally, in a properly functioning market, you couldn't just raise the price of your drug 200% because you have some competitor right. or a number of competitors who just keep it at the original price, and so you can't sell it for that. But because of the rigorous intellectual patent enforcement that is part of the American legal system and sort of and somewhat unique to the American legal system, they can get away with that. That is the case for insulin. I bet it is for a lot of those others. 100%. And to be clear, so many of these drugs were developed in state right. institutions, publicly funded institutions. Right. And then they turn around, get exclusive rights to them, and jack up profits. At the same time that there are people involved in these institutions, people like uh, Zions, who are extracting money from the government for services that aren't actually being provided or aren't medically indicated. I mean, the, the grift is all around. And the idea that you would choose somebody with this checkered of political history to be your senior advisor, your chief of staff, is, is outrageous. And I got to say, I happened to be listening to Pod Save America as I was coming into work today. And they were talking about the appointments of, of, of Zions. And they were like, oh, well, there's some pushback from the left about his, about his um, record. But I think that people should be judged on what they do when they're in public office and not about what their careers were before they entered public office. They didn't have the same obligation to the people. That's malarkey. That's absolutely ridiculous. The idea that one's entire life experiences of, of working for being a profit generator for the very industries you're now supposed to regulate, oh, that, that you can just siphon off those parts or, or, or cordon off those par parts of your life like that is so naive that I don't believe that these people could actually believe it. They're just doing anything to run cover for the corruption of the Biden administration, and it's disgusting. Um, not at all surprised to hear that Pod Save, Pod Save America landed on the trust the Zions <laughs> version of this thing. Uh, thank you so much for that, Brianna. We'll have more rising right after this.